Welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago, I did a video on how to create delay in microseconds using DWT. Although it worked perfectly, there were some microcontrollers which does not support DWT. Especially the F0 series and the F3 series microcontrollers. So today in this video, I will show you how to generate delay in microseconds and nanoseconds across all the STM32 controllers. And to do so, I am going to use the timers. Let's start with the Cube MX first. I am using STM32 Cube IDE. OK, now the clock is set to the maximum. Note that, the APB2 clock is at 180 MHz. And the APB1 clock is at, 90 MHz. Now, let's take a look at the timers, in the data sheet. Note that, timer 1 is connected to the APB2. So, I am going to use that for the delay. Because, in order to create delay in nanoseconds, I need at least 100 MHz clock frequency, for the timer. Set the timer at 100 MHz. Now like I said, I need 100 MHz, for the delay in nanoseconds, and it will give me a delay of 10 nanoseconds. Unfortunately I cannot go lower than that. So, the prescalar value is going to be zero. Because, we cannot divide the APB clock, any further. I am writing 1 1 minus 1, just to indicate that, whatever value is input here, the microcontroller is going to add 1 to it. So, our actual value is 1, and we are subtracting 1, for the microcontroller to add it later. The auto reload register, for timer 1, is 16 bit. So, I will input the maximum value here, and that is 0 cross FFFF, which turns out to be 65536 in decimals. Also, I am setting pin P1 as output, so that, we can measure the frequency, in an oscilloscope. Let's write the code now. Ok, first of all, I will create a function for the delay. Whose parameter is going to be, the delay we want. Remember that, if you input value 1 here, that's going to be, a 10 nanoseconds delay. Because, our clock is at 100 megahertz. Inside this function, we will set the counter to zero, and then, let the counter increment, until it reaches the input value, that we have provided. Each count takes, 10 nanoseconds in this case. Once it does, the control will come out from the loop. Also remember that, we cannot use the delay higher than 65536. Because, that's the limit for our counter, as it is only 16 bits. If you want higher values, you have to use a 32-bit timer. But in my case, the maximum clock to the 32-bit timers is 90 MHz. So I couldn't use it. Now, inside the main function. Let's toggle the pin after some delay.
So, if the delay is 1, that's going to be 10 nanoseconds. Now 100 nanoseconds, 1000 nanoseconds, which is 1 microsecond. 10 microseconds, 100 microseconds. I am using this higher delay, because I don't have means to measure the high frequencies. So, this 100 microseconds, is going to give me a frequency of 10 kilohertz, which I can measure. But, as the pin will toggle, after every 100 microseconds, the oscilloscope is going to read it as, 5 kilohertz. Because this one reads the frequency of, pin toggling. Make sure you initialize the timer, in its normal mode. Let's build this code, and test it. If you want 1 nanoseconds delay, your controller frequency should be, at least 1 gigahertz. Similarly, if you want the delay in microseconds, all you have to do is, use the prescaler, to divide the main timer clock, to get a 1 megahertz frequency. So, the prescaler value, in that case would be, 100 minus 1. As you can see here, the frequency is 5 kHz. That means the nanosecond delay is working, as it should. Let me reduce the delay a little, so that we can increase the frequency. Now I am using, 50 microseconds delay. Technically, this should give me the frequency of 20 kHz, but like I said, the oscilloscope is going to read, the frequency of pin toggling, it is going to read it as 10 kHz. As you can see, it's reading 10 kHz. I hope you understood this guys. This should work across all SDM32 devices, if you choose the timers properly, by taking a look at the datasheet. This is for this video. Keep watching. Have a nice day.